genetics. What can it mean? The ability to perfect the physical and mental characteristics of every unborn child. It's the stuff of science fiction, the wild imaginings of Hollywood films, or is it? In late 2018, Chinese scientist Jin Kui He shocked the world, claiming to have created the first ever gene-edited babies, twin girls named Lulu and Nana, using a tool called CRISPR-Cas9. Right after we sent her husband's sperm into her egg, we also sent in a little bit of protein and instruction for a gene surgery. He said he had edited out a part of their DNA passed on from their HIV-positive father. This was to ensure the babies were born with resistance to the virus. The announcement was met with surprise and skepticism from the scientific community. Anything like this, you're going to get caught because there's, a, there's just so much material that you don't know that's going on that it, it's dangerous and it's unethical. So that's why today there's such a tumultuous response against germline gene editing. It's that term, germline editing, that makes CRISPR controversial. There's a distinct difference between editing embryos, which is what happened in China, and editing genes in a lab. Neville Sanjana, a scientist at the New York Genome Center and NYU, works with CRISPR technologies, and he explains the difference. Somatic editing are things you do in one organism that is only in that organism, um, whether it be a, a plant or um, uh, an animal, whatever. Um, but germline editing is, is much more serious stuff because that, when you edit, say, the sperm or the egg cells, that's something that's now a heritable mutation that's, that's passed down to every cell in the next generation and potentially for many generations after it. So what exactly is CRISPR-Cas9? At its heart, um, CRISPR and uh, Cas9 are, are DNA editors. They're DNA um, modifying systems. CRISPR wasn't created by humans. It occurs naturally. One, I think, incredible thing that to know about CRISPR systems and Cas9 is that they weren't just created in, in a lab. They're actually naturally existing proteins. And the natural role of, of uh, Cas9 and CRISPR systems in nature is a bacterial immune system. It was actually less than a decade ago scientists realized the immense applications of CRISPR for gene editing. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. It has two components that make it what it is. The Cas9 protein, which cuts the DNA, essentially acting as the scissors, and a guide RNA, which is the brains of the operation, recognizing what DNA needs to be edited. To use the CRISPR tool, scientists first identify the sequence of DNA that they want to edit, then create a specific guide RNA to recognize that piece of DNA. The RNA is placed inside the cutting tool, the Cas9 protein. This is then introduced into the cells. It locates the target sequence that the RNA has been designed to recognize and then cuts the DNA. Once the cut is made, scientists can delete, modify, or insert entirely new DNA sequences. Okay, so that still seems a bit complex, and you're probably thinking, I really don't understand what that means. Think of it like editing a document. You find the errors or the words you don't want. You highlight them and remove or replace those words. That's essentially what CRISPR does in DNA and how it was used to edit the embryos in China. CRISPR, it's so useful. I mean, scientists have been trying to introduce you know, changes into the DNA in order to understand the function of genes, in order to understand the function of, of the bits of DNA in between the genes for years. And, you know, we've been, there's been techniques to do that, but this allows really accurate changes to be done very quickly. CRISPR is being used in many different ways that don't involve making designer babies. It's used in everything from creating healthier and stronger crops, like wheat, to finding drugs that may work best to treat a specific cancer. So we have a, a quite a new technology at the Sanger Institute um, where we take uh, tissue from people with cancer. So we take a bit of the cancer tissue and we're actually able to grow it in culture. And then what we do is we can treat these, these cells from the patient with CRISPR-Cas9 and we can basically work out what, um, which, ge which genes are 
involved with the cancer of that particular patient. So while CRISPR has opened up a whole new realm of possibility when it comes to gene editing, experts agree that this doesn't mean we will see designer babies with hand-picked eye colors or resistance to cancer anytime soon. It's not going to be that easy to make someone super strong or give them superhuman eyesight. These are complex genetic traits and we don't fully understand them. The scientist who created the CRISPR babies has largely been condemned for his use of germline editing. He's lost his job, and China has taken steps to prevent this from happening again. But there is no denying it has opened up a conversation about CRISPR as a gene editing tool. I think what's really interesting is this sort of ethical debate that's now happening. And I think there's a really, I think while what happened in China was irresponsible in the way it was done. I think, on the other hand, you know, it, we are now having a conversation and I think it's an important conversation to have. In a society where success is determined by science. So while science fiction has become reality, we aren't likely to see Hollywood's version of designer babies in the foreseeable future. But an important debate on ethics and how far is too far has now begun as scientists continue to push the limits of innovation using CRISPR to better human life the world over. Hey, thanks for watching Global News. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like the video. And you can also hit the subscribe button on your screen to make sure that you get all the latest international news and the best trending videos.